This is the Schmo with the pro, with the former UFC heavyweight, the broadcaster, the podcaster, the founding father of the Thick Boy Club, Brendan Schaub, the one and only here in the Below the Belt studios. How we doing? I'm good, man. Good to see you. I have similar glasses like that. Mine are Gucci, though. No, I'm not trying to. That's not a humble brag. But when I wear them, everyone's like, oh, you're copying the schmo. I'm like, he t- you get the yellow glasses? Like, that. you're the yellow glass guy? Like, you're the, it was Steven Seagal for a while, and now it's you. I wear them. Now it's like, oh, you're copying the schmo. So you've made it, man. I appreciate that. We got the schmo line glasses. We never said that Brendan Schaub with the Gucci glasses. We seen Greg Hardy wear those too. But hey, man, you look good in them either way. Thanks, man. I'm just, you know, I guess I'm copping your style, dude. I didn't know you had your own line. What are we? Damn. Pretty recent. Uh, we got to get you a pair of these. Yeah, you do. You do. I'll wear those over the Gucci, man. All right. We'll make it happen. Mr. Schaub, it's great to be here, man. Let's talk about some fight news, man. A lot of people are talking about John Jones. John Jones wanting to get paid. We know he just did an interview with Helen Yee Sports, Lincoln Francis, and gone with Derek Lewis. But if you're John Jones, what's the minimum amount of money that you'd fight for in the UFC? If I'm John, what would I fight for? I would do a uh, 10 to $15 million base fee and then a percentage of pay-per-views. Because if you, get, if you get that pay-per-view percentage, that thing's going to crush. So then he walks away with $20, 30000000 million. And that's what was reported he's asking for, right? Yes. You just had Misha Tate on the Food Truck Diaries, man. What do you expect from her in her return? Good question. You know, can she beat Amanda Nunes? I, I, I mean, I'm I mean, what do you what do you do? So it's it's kind of like you know in that other you know with with Shevchenko, it's like you know everyone's vying to to fight you know Shevchenko or Nunes, and it's like all right, you're just gonna get up there and get beat up. But you know Misha Tate, uh, people forget, man, she's one all time great. So you know I think she came over for a good reason, and I you know as she talked about on Food Truck a little bit, you know her life, especially towards the tail end of her career, was chaos, man. You see what she was dealing with. So now she has a great man. She has kids. She's fighting for the right reason. So, you know, it's going to be interesting if she gets that man in Nunes fight. Be interesting to see indeed. Let's talk about the welterweight division. Usman, he won in the rematch against Jorge Maswell, beginning to do the lap around in the welterweight division. But he recently said, what has a guy like Colby Covington done to deserve the rematch? Do you think that's the fight to make in the welterweight division? Usman against Covington. Because we've heard him shout out a name like, what, Michael Chiesa, who's ranked number six? Yeah, he's reaching there. Michael And I love Michael Chiesa, and he is my dark horse in that welterweight division to do work, and he could be a champ. But not yet, right? We know this. Not yet. So what has Colby done? Colby gave you your toughest fight. You know, Kobe was a round away from winning that goddamn thing. So if you want to see the champ, you know, defend his belt and be forced to the brink and really bring out the best in the champ, Kobe Covington's that guy, man. So I think Kobe's deserved it. I really do. We got to ask you this question. Why did you set up Dylan Dennis like that on the food truck diaries? Jake Ball coming by with the drive-by with the water balloons. Come on, man. I know. No, you're right. I wish I had the, the intelligence to set all that up to, to go viral like that. But, uh, you know, hats off to Jake and Logan Paul. They, they, uh, Logan was on the week before. And one of the, the, my staff goes, oh, yeah, we, we have uh, Dylan next week. And Logan goes, you have Dylan on here? Yeah, Dylan Dennis is, is a buddy of mine. He's coming next week. He goes, oh, I should have Jake stop by. And I said, I mean, I guess. I can't have them fighting, man. He goes, hey, it'd be fun. It'd, it'd build the fire. I go, yeah, sure. And I said, but I have to let Dylan know. So uh, Dylan gets in town, and the night before, he's staying in Santa Monica. I go, hey, dude, just so you know, Jake and Logan might stop by, you know, to do their YouTube thing and, you know, build the fight. And I go, but I can't have you getting set up, but I want you to know that they're planning on doing something, dude. So get your mind right. And Dylan goes, good. Tell them to come by because I'm going to beat the shit out of them. I went, well, hold on. I can't have you guys fighting, but, you know, just let them do their thing. He goes, no, no, no. If I see them, I'm going to fight them. So I'm like, oh, my God, please don't. I had no idea what they're going to do. We're doing the interview. 
Obviously, Jake pulls up with his goons and video crew and start throwing wet toilet paper at him. Well, Dylan's coming off a, a knee surgery, so he goes to run after him. Thank God he didn't get in the truck, and then who knows what lawsuit I would have faced there. So didn't didn't set him up. I wish I had the brains to calculate all that, but unfortunately, that's I got to give credit to the Paul brothers. So it seems like that Dylan Dennis was the first choice of Jake Paul at the box, and then Ben Askren was number two. Now that Jake Paul, his 3-0, and he's finally being an MMA guy and Ben Askren, he knocked him out, who would you say is the likely next opponent? Could they still go back to Dylan Dennis? Is it a Tyron Woodley? Who do you think it's going to be? I like Dylan Dan because th this I I think Logan and Jake are on different paths. I think Logan's doing you know he's gonna fight Floyd if Vegas is right. He's you know he might get destroyed, but it, there doesn't seem that it's not a career path for him. For Jake, he, you know, and from what I've seen from Jake and his training, seen him train, you're talking about a guy who really wants to pursue fighting. He's taking it serious and he's making the necessary steps. He's also the face of Triller. He goes down. Triller's super screwed. So. You know, Dylan Dance is a good step. And also, I know people want to see him fight Woodley or, you know, freaking Canelo or some shit like that. But, you know, <clears throat> he's new, man. So you, you got to let him, you know, do his thing and fight these guys that maybe aren't, you know, world champions in boxing. So uh, Dylan Dennis, I think it would be a good step. Dylan thinks he can beat him. To me, and I, I keep saying this, I don't know if there's any validation or if it could even happen, a guy like Mike Perry would be a good step, a guy who is a UFC caliber fighter who's known for striking. So now you're fighting an MMA guy, not a complete pro boxer, but Perry can crack and can take a shot. So I'd like to see a Mike Perry get in there. And they sparred before. There's some history there, too. Let's move on to the heavyweight boxing situation. A little bit of a monkey wrench now that Deontay Wilder won the arbitration. It screws up the plans of Saudi Arabia for Joshua and Fury. What do you make of this little triangle situation there at the top? Uh, and this comes from a guy who's worked with Wilder. I'm a huge Wilder fan. There couldn't be a guy who's mismatched his career worse than Deontay Wilder so far, right? So he makes all these excuses why he lost to Fury, which just terrible. Everybody smells what's going on there. And then the one fight we want to see with Fury and Anthony Joshua that was booked August 14th in Saudi Arabia, he gets between and stops and prevents it from happening. So then the public, you know, nobody's vying to see Wilder and Tyson Fury. So not only did he take a huge hit with the way he dealt with the loss, but now he's taking another hit because, dude, you're stopping from seeing everything we want to – nobody really wants to see Tyson versus Wilder. So, you know, it's just it's just, it's just, just a bad look, man. It, it drives me nuts. It drives me nuts. Can we get a final message for all the Brendan Schaub fans out there worldwide? Oh, when's this here? Soon as possible, within 24 hours, oh, wow. the smoke gets okay. it up there. Oh, my bad. I didn't know this was big. All right, pro professionals. Uh, I mean, not much, man. Keep watching. I love you guys. And uh, I'll be in Houston this week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Houston Improv. Come see me, man. Can the Schmo announce who you're going to have on the Food Truck Diaries we ran into over there in the parking lot? Yeah, that airs tomorrow. We do 24-hour turnarounds here too, my man. Yeah, tomorrow, Tim Kennedy. It's great to see the guy. He looks great. Dude, well, you're welcome for your freedom. He's one of the guys protecting our freedom. So, yeah, he's one of the best. So are you. I try, man. I love you guys. We love you too. He's the pro. I'm the Schmo in Santa Monica, California. We're out.